Um, so when I talk about the microbiome, just know that I don't have any particular expertise except as somebody who's poked around on PubMed and tried to figure out why am I getting the results that I'm getting in practice with uh, various herbs and wondering if the microbiome had something to do with it. So um, it started actually when uh, uh, I was trying to figure out why do dogs, a lot of dogs, do so well on raw diets. Um, of course, one of the many things that happens for a lot of dogs is they they may be overweight going in. I think I should probably eat a raw diet. They may be uh, overweight going in, and then um, they uh, just slim right down. And I think there are good metabolic reasons for you know what raw food does. I think there's good metabolic reasons for that slimming effect. But then I also understood that changes in a microbiome can precipitate that slimming effect. So that's what dragged me to PubMed is to try to understand, you know, how does the microbiome shift when you're eating different foods and, uh, you know, what, what is the, the new population of bacteria? Um, you know, what, what does that, what does accomplish? Um, so that was what started me on that path. And, um, the, uh, I don't, I don't know if the microbiome helps the dogs lose weight, potentially, probably, but, I think the metabolic reasons are more important, but what really interested me and where I found what I found answers to uh, were uh, what happens to dogs, you know, what's going on with dogs who don't thrive on raw diets, which, you know, it just seems like they all should. Uh, and I was trying to understand that because those metabolic impacts are all still there. So what's different about them? And I realized that, or in poking around, I realized that it might be the microbiome. So to, you're going to see that you can never ask me a question and ex expect a succinct answer. So I apologize in advance, but that's just a long preface for my, my reply, which is that one of the things that I noticed, what, one of the things about a healthy microbiome is that it's diverse. So there are a lot of different bacteria species. That was one thing that became apparent reading the literature. The other thing that surprised me was that when they were looking at the microbiome of all these healthy dogs, uh, or defined as having a healthy microbiome, their species were just all over the map. They weren't, they didn't have the same populations at all. Um, so that that was a little bit of a surprise. I just assumed that, you know, a healthy dogs worldwide are going to have, you know, basically the same species. But I, I didn't see that that was the case. Maybe on a on a niche level, uh, maybe there's they're the same niches being filled. But um, I haven't had the time to really dig into that. So diversity is the first thing. And uh, and and not really expecting particular species to always be there. That was the other big uh, thing that I stumbled upon. I'll try to be shorter in my subsequent answers. <laughs> that's great. No, that's awesome. Um, so do you, so uh, do you, do you think that, that food is, is the thing that is supporting microbiome diversity or how, how would you, you know, elaborate on that just a tiny sure. bit more? Uh, yeah, actually. So, um, I realized that I started looking because because you couldn't really, um, I, I was almost uh, discounting various species. Um, but one one study I looked at was fascinating because it showed a before and after of the same dogs as they transitioned to raw diets. And what really struck me was that um, the carbohydrate fermenting bacteria. Uh, vanished, at least from dogs fed that diet. And that made sense to me because, uh, you know, a lot of raw diets uh, are really lacking in plant material. So uh, to, to suddenly see the disappearance of species that basically are adapted to carbohydrates and plant material, that made sense to me. So then it was just a quick uh, sort of look to say, well, okay, so these species that disappeared, like Lactobacillus most notably kind of springs to mind, what do they do? And that led me to 
uh, to discover that a lot of the carbohydrate fermenting bacteria double as immune regulators. Um, so they regulate the immune system. And then that's when things kind of fell into place for me in terms of why do some dogs skin allergies just not disappear or even start when they're on a raw diet? I began to realize, or or shall I say speculate, that um, there are certain individuals, probably whole breeds, that have just become adapted over however long they've been around to having certain populations of bacteria in their intestinal tract, call them carbohydrate fermenters. And if they're not there, then their immune systems start to struggle. Uh, and we might even have overgrowth of other types of space, species that we don't particularly like. So um, I'm not sure if that answers the question. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Dr. B, go ahead and ask a question if you like. I, I, I can only, we're, we're gonna, we're just gonna fly blindly here in a, in a way. Well, I'm just listening to what Steve says and trying to tie it in with my own experience and my own understanding. And there's the, it's a bit like, uh, Steve, when you said you need a preface to what you've got to say, it's, it's always that that's the case because there are so many things darting through my mind. Um, one is like you, I, I'm very late to the party with the microbiome. I always knew it was important. Um, that this this tube that actually sits outside our body, it's not inside our body, in the sense physiologically at least, although physically it's inside the body, but physiologically it, the, the, our lecturers always emphasise this is outside the body. So we live with this microbiome, which is essentially outside the body, but in, inside, and we interact very, very closely with it. And one of the things... We speak about pro prebiotics, and we always think, oh, prebiotics, that's plant material. But if you think about it, everything we eat is essentially a prebiotic right. for our, the bacteria there. So whatever it is in that raw diet that you're feeding is going to d determine what bacterial species are there. Because if, if you're feeding, um, if, if you have a herd of elephants, and you're feeding meat only, that herd of elephants is going to disappear. Right. Yeah. Simple. If you've got a herd of, let's say, I've got to say, use the same word, a herd of jaguars, and you feed them uh, grass only, those jaguars will disappear. Yep. It really is that simple.